All right, welcome back. Today we are going to be processing this red squirrel that we caught in the last episode, where I showed you how to set up squirrel poles, the type of wire I use, snare size, all that good stuff. We were successful in catching one of these squirrels, so today I'm going to walk you through the process on how I skin it and process the meat. So there's many different ways to skin squirrels, and it depends on whether or not you're planning on keeping the hide. And since we are going to be keeping it, the method that I'm going to be showing you today takes a little bit longer, but it allows us to keep this pelt intact so that we can tan it and utilize it in the future. The knife that I'm going to be using today is just a kitchen knife that I picked up at the store for a few dollars. I reshaped it, put a new bevel on it. It's a really soft steel, which in my opinion for skinning is what you want. You're inevitably going to be running into bone with this thing, so you want something that's easy to sharpen, easy to maintain. And throughout the skinning process, I often use one of these sharpening rods and work the knife across it maybe a dozen times or so. That will maintain your edge real nicely because trying to skin these animals with a dull knife is a big pain. So before we begin, I will mention that a lot of these squirrels tend to have fleas. This one does have fleas. If you're going to be eating the meat, I wouldn't recommend using any type of an insect killer to kill them. If you're planning on just keeping the pelt, throwing the meat away, you can throw it into a plastic bag, uh, spray a little shot of insect killer like Raid into the bag, seal it up for 20 minutes or so, and that should get rid of all the fleas. If you are planning on eating the meat, I wouldn't use any chemicals to get rid of the fleas. What you can do is either leave the squirrel outside or put it in the freezer, leave it frozen for a week or two, and that should kill most of the fleas. The squirrel that we're dealing with today does have some. I've seen a few already. Uh, just be aware of that. It's good to wear gloves when you're dealing with animals too. It just acts as a barrier between you and the animal. That way if uh, it has any diseases or anything, it's not going to be transmitted to you. So to begin the skinning process, what I do is I come to the tail and I brush all the hair forward. And then I'll, with my thumb, find the very base of the tail where I can feel it joined to the body. And then I just take my thumbs and I just separate the fur right at the base of the tail like that. So now we can see exactly where the base of the tail is at, which is going to help lead our cuts. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a cut along the back side of the leg to the base of the tail on both legs. And that's going to be our initial cut. And from there we just peel the skin off. So rather than trying to start the cut up here right by the foot, there's a lot of little bones by the ankle and stuff that can be difficult to get your knife through. So if you come just a little bit up and then poke your knife in there. And now if you're going to be keeping the meat or utilizing the meat, try not to poke your knife too deep because you don't want to cut up all that leg meat. Once we get in under the skin, we just begin to work that cut towards the base of the tail. And if you take your fingers and you just separate the fur, that cut will open up and help you to see where you need to go. So we come down the leg, now we're going to try and cut across here to where we made that initial mark in the fur at the base of the tail. So now we've completed this cut all the way down the back of the leg. You can see the base of the tail there. So now that we've done that, what we can do is turn this around we can extend this cut up the back of the leg. I usually try to get up right to that that ankle bone there. Try to get that exposed. That'll just make it easier for the skinning process. So now what I'll do is I like to open up this cut here at the base of the tail. And we just do the other leg the exact same way. Now 
we just follow this cut down and join it up with our other cut. Just like that on this other back leg. We just extend this cut up. Right to that same ankle bone. So that there's our initial cut running right between both back legs to the base of the tail. Now we can begin skinning. So we come to the foot area right by that ankle bone that we brought our cut up to. And if you come to the outside of the leg, I find that that's the easiest place to start. There's a little bit of extra skin there. Just grab that. Begin to work around. You usually get your thumb through and you just pull that skin right off. Then if you are going to be saving the meat like I'm going to be, helps if you can try to keep as much meat attached to the to the leg. Sometimes it'll want to tear away. We just work the skin off that leg. We come around to the underside of the tail. Get our thumb under there. Then we'll start with the second leg here. Once again, I'm coming to the outside of the leg where there's a little bit of extra skin. Just work my thumb through. Pull that skin off. And with my thumb, I just work the hide off. Come through to the base of the tail. So we got that skin all loosened off all the way around the tail. So the tail can be a little bit tricky to skin to get the tailbone all the way out. I remember when I first began, I struggled with it quite a bit. I ended up with lots of squirrel pelts with no tails. You don't wanna grab through here and try and pull, because you'll just end up ripping that tail completely off. What I do is I take my thumb and I push my nail in, and then push back with my thumb. I'm not pulling on the tail itself, more so just using my thumb to push back that skin. Once you work that skin down a little ways, usually what you can do is push this back over and then grip towards the base. And then leverage out that tail. You'll feel it release. When you do that whole bone will come out and you'll be left with a nice tail completely attached to your pelt. So now what we're gonna do is come to the belly side. We're just going to work our thumb through. Work it through like that. And then once we're through, we take our knife and we just cut off that excess fur. And from here, 
We can just take this, just begin to work it down. And pull that right down to its front legs. For the front leg, we just pull that skin up off the leg and then pull that paw through. Same thing on this side. And pull this down. Now we are onto the head. So you can see we got our skin right here, and then this is the skull. On either side of the head, we're going to have an ear. Now you don't want to cut through the ear real close to the hide, or else you're going to end up with a big blown out ear. You want to come back towards where the base of the ear is and cut there. When you do that, you get the entire ear intact. You're not going to have a big hole in, in your pelt. Once again, come to the back of the ear. And to keep pressure on it, if you can squeeze the nose through the pelt, which will help to keep pressure going forward. We'll just bring this down to the eyes now. When you get to the eyes, <clears throat> they can be a little tricky to do. But it helps if you can get up close and actually pinch that skin and kind of lift it up off of the skull. And then don't cut towards the pelt, cut towards the skull itself. Continue to grab and lift. When you do it this way, you end up getting the entire eye so that once again, we aren't going to end up with a big blown out hole. We're going to get the eyelid in there. There's going to be no fur missing. And it's not going to end up being a, a big hole where the eye should be. So onto this side again, we just pinch, begin to cut. So after we get past the eye, then we just have the nose left. And we're just going to cut along the side of the face. I wouldn't worry too much about the bottom jaw, we end up cutting the bottom lip off anyways. So we mostly just want to bring this top lip and the nose part all the way to the end. When you get there, you can cut right through a little bit of the cartilage. Then you end up with the pelt just hanging on by the bottom lip. We actually end up cutting that off. So we just take that. And we just cut that off. So this is how your squirrel ends up. A little bit of fur on the bottom of its lip. Fur on the paws. And a little bit between the legs. And that's it. You are left with a nice pelt. like that. Nice looking squirrel actually, good red color to it. Quite nice. You can see the eyes look good. They're not blown out. They got the entire eyelid intact. Same with the ears. They're not big holes. So this is a squirrel pelt ready to be fleshed and then either boarded and dried or fleshed and tanned. But that is how you get your squirrel pelt off of the animal. So now we need to clean our squirrel. First thing I do is lift the tail up just come under the tail, make a cut, and you'll feel a, a vertebrae there that you can cut through. Next up, you'll take the head off. So right in front of the shoulders, just make a cut through there. And then again, you'll get to the vertebrae. There we 
go. And for the paws, same thing. Now you can be real fancy and cut through the joint, but these bones are pretty thin, so you can actually just take your knife and cut right through them. That gets rid of one. Next we'll do the back legs. For the back legs, I actually find it easier to break them rather than cut through them. So we just cut through this tendon, and then we take them and just twist them, and they'll loosen off. And then with the remaining tissue, you can just take your knife and cut through real simply. So now we need to get rid of this extra fur. I mean to get rid of the innards. To do this is pretty simple. We just take our knife, take the tip of it, and we just poke through the stomach lining. Run our knife all the way down. And try to run it all the way down. And just push your knife through. And actually get right through the bones there. And we can come up this way. Do our same cut. And come right through the, the chest cavity. They got pretty thin bones. They got pretty thin rib bones. So you can get through them pretty easily. Once we've done that, open it up. There's all of its innards. So the first thing that I'd recommend checking before you eat an animal is this bad boy right here, which is the liver. This one looks to be real healthy. It's nice and dark. There's no white spots. It's not inflamed. It doesn't look foamy at all. It's got good color. It's a good healthy liver. If the animal is sick or diseased, usually the liver is going to let you know. So the fact that this has a healthy liver makes me feel perfectly comfortable eating it. So now to get rid of these innards, you just kind of reach into the rib cage and you can feel all the membrane and stuff. You just reach around and pull it all out. And I just use my thumb and just work everything out. It'll all peel out. Go right down to the bottom. And everything comes out. I'll usually just double check to make sure I got all the esophagus out and everything up here. And that is a clean squirrel there. You can see that nice back meat. That's what we want right there. That lower half of the back. We got our legs, the front legs and the back legs. That's going to be some good eating. So now that we got our squirrel skinned and cleaned, you can do whatever you want with it. You can throw this whole thing in a pot, cook it up. For my meal tonight, I'm going to be frying it, so I'm mostly going to be focusing on the meatier areas. So I'm going to be getting rid of the rib cage and just taking the legs and then that lower back portion. The rib cage really doesn't have much to it, but if you're making a stew or something, you can definitely throw this whole thing in a pot and it's cooked up perfectly fine. So we'll start separating these legs. We'll do the front legs first. I lay the squirrel so its belly is down, back is up. I take one of these shoulders and when you lift it up and kind of rotate it forward, you can see how it lifts up on this back side. That's where I begin my cut. I just cut right in there, right along that shoulder. And then you can come over to this side and cut that joining muscle. And you're going to get to a little bone. I think it's kind of the clavicle bone or something. And I usually come up to the top side of it and cut it off. Just get a little extra bit of meat there. So that's our first front leg. Go ahead and do the other one. So there's our two front legs. For the back legs, you're going to see where the muscle joins up with the back. We're just going to cut right along that. You're going to feel you're going to feel where that big ball joint is for the femur. 
we're just going to work around to get to that little ball joint. You can see that ball right there. That's that ball joint. And you usually just pop it out once you make your initial cut and then cut around it. And then there's a back leg. So we got our four legs. Now we just want to get this nice back meat. So you can see where this stomach muscle joins up to this back muscle. We're actually going to follow that line and cut right along down it, right to the ribs. So we'll make a cut and just follow that down. It separates quite easily. And you'll get to that rib. And then we can follow that rib down to the backbone. And we'll do the other side here. When you get to this backbone, you can actually just pop that vertebrae. And then in that vertebrae there, you can finish the cut. So that's the rib cage and a little bit of the neck. But there's not much meat there. If I was making a stew or something, absolutely I would throw that in. But to fry up, it's really not worth it. So... We'll feed that to the birds. So now we got a little bit of this hip left on here. So we're just gonna, you can feel where that hip joins. So we're gonna follow that muscle in. We're really just trying to get rid of that little bone. Just like that. And then cut that off. Same with this side. You can feel where it joins up with the back muscle there. Get rid of that. Then we got ourselves a nice little piece of back muscle there. So there we have it. That is how I process a squirrel for fur and for meat. And once you do a few of them, you get real quick at it. You can get the fur off in a minute or two. You can break down the body into these separate cuts real quick. The pelt, I'm going to flesh it and then board it, let it dry, and then I'll put it in my freezer and I'll get back to it in the summer when I can tan it. And the next step for the meat is going to be to wash it and then cook it. And that will be in the next episode. And I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.